What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another highly combustible reaction. We're jumping into part two of our geography now, Switzerland. Let's learn a little more. If you guys enjoyed, make sure you get over show geography now some love. If you didn't check out the first episode, we dropped it yesterday. Go check that one out as well. Let's see what we got. Let's finish learning about Switzerland because we didn't know nothing about Switzerland until yesterday. Let's go. Switzerland, as we already explained, has a lot of cantons and there's actually kind That's of true. a word we you guys have that. in switzerland explain herman it's eidgenossenschaft what does it mean eidgenossenschaft came along and formed a nation except for ticino which we conquered despite the fact that each of the region kind of has their own canton cultural difference at the end of the day they are all Swiss. Here's how you break down the populace. First of all, the country has about 8.5 million people and often ranks in the top three global competitive markets and human development index scores on earth. Ethnically speaking, things get a little complicated because Swiss censuses only take in data from factors like citizenship and place of birth. So the specific details can be a little vague, but in the broadest sense, it will say that about 75% of the country are Swiss nationals and the remaining 25% are resident foreigners, one of the highest proportions in the developed world. From here, things get a little overlappy because within both groups everything breaks down linguistically as well often switzerland will refer to their linguistic groups for data rather than ethnic in which case about 63 percent of the country are primarily german speaking swiss 23 percent are primarily french speaking and somewhere around eight to nine percent are primarily italian speaking finally less than one percent are romance speaking keep in mind this data can apply to anyone from anywhere that claims these languages as primaries regardless of their ethnic background what we do know though is that of the 25% foreign residents, about 64% of them are from the EU or EFTA countries, the largest being Italians, followed by Germans and Portuguese and French. There's a sizable Kosovar Albanian community, and of the Asian community, Sri Lankans, mostly of Tamil descent, make up the largest demographic. The Swiss franc is wow. the we drive on the right side of the road. And you guys use the J plug outlet, which I hate because there's like an inward diamond shaped divot and my C plug adapters don't fit. Why do you, you guys are trying to do everything to be different from the rest of Europe. It's so yeah. weird. Well, sometimes you introduce a standard before the rest of Europe and then it's too late. In Switzerland, the dishwashers used to be 55 centimeters and then Europe introduced the new standard of 60 centimeters. But the problem is it costs more to manufacture in a special size. So our dishwashers cost three times as much. Yay. Anyway, Switzerland has four official languages, Swiss German, Swiss French, Swiss Italian, and Romansh. Even though less than 1% of the country speaks it, it's still an official language. It's actually pretty closely related to vulgar Latin, which was spoken in the Roman Empire, and uh, it's also a cousin of Romanian. So most of us know three languages somehow. What is the difference somehow. between Swiss German I like and the somehow. English spoken in Germany? So Swiss German is a, a very strong dialect. We have uh, dropped, for example, the simple past tense, and uh, the Germans don't really understand us. Don't even get started with French Swiss as well, although I do like how they use the nonante and uh, huitante and uh, septante, quatre-vingt and quatre-vingt-dix. Like, yeah. uh, 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 and don't even get started with Ticino blue. Italian. In, in fact, you know what? Mat Matteo can explain it. Here you go. This guy can explain. So Ticino Swiss sounds very much like uh, Northern uh, Lombardy. You can't tell if it's a Swiss or not but just by the pronunciation. But the Swiss have some specific words that awesome. give them up. For example, they say Natel instead of mobile phone or they say lift instead of ascensore for saying lift. Except for this, it's just usual Northern Italian uh, speak. Anyway, regardless of the linguistic background, they are not French Swiss or German Swiss or Italian. They're all just Swiss. For what it's worth though, there's so much backstory with Switzerland. For example, the Habsburg family, which ruled the Austrian-Hungarian Empire for centuries, was from Habsburg in Argau, Switzerland. But they lost with their knights against the Swiss peasants in the Battle of Morgarten. See, this is kind of the interesting contrast to the otherwise neutral, peaceful image of Switzerland comes in. The brutal fighting skill of the Swiss was so well-renowned throughout Europe that it actually kind of became like their biggest export. All the rulers in Europe uh, got Swiss mercenaries. And yeah, the he French who have the most money the Italian army, and have the, the best Swiss army. Fighting Swiss. That's so weird. And then they actually decided to stop having offensive war and introduce this neutrality. Nonetheless, you know, their neutrality has always been kind of pressured throughout the years and it's been kind of pushed. Uh, explain a little bit. They're neutral, but I bet you they could still fight to defend themselves. I wouldn't be messing with Switzerland. More Herman. In neutrality, you also have to treat both sides of the war similar. For example, you could not trade with any of them, but we didn't do that because we didn't want to get invaded by Germany. So True. we traded with Germany, we traded some with the Allies. In the historic context of being surrounded by the Axis powers, 
well, you had to, to stay you, neutral. Yeah. You had to do what you had to do. How do you deal with all this pressure trying to be neutral when the whole world is not neutral and you're surrounded by everybody? It's a tough question. But for what it's worth, Switzerland has known that neutrality has always kind of come at a cost. And this is one of the reasons why Switzerland is a conscription country. You go to military after you're 19, once for half a year, and then every year, a couple of weeks, three or four, until you're 30 or 31. There's no wow. disclaimer though. There are some exceptions. The Swiss military has some quotas of how many people they want. If you have some health issues, you don't have to go to the military, but you will be paying 3% of your salary to the army. And if you have... Can we adopt some Switzerland things? Can we just like say yes, that's what we want? Not to go. You can also well, fill out I'm all for that. to not go to the military, but you will have to take one and a half times as much time in something called civil service maybe, yeah. where you do some, some projects for the good of the country. So at the end of the day, somehow... I'm one of those people that believes that you should definitely have to do something for your country before your country does anything for you. This sounds like the perfect place. Maybe I need to go become... America Swiss some, some projects for the good of the country. So at the end of the day somehow you have to serve Switzerland Yeah, and after the military service you usually take the gun home Technically Switzerland has one of the highest gun ownership populations in the world. This all kind of plays into their unique system of government It's often said that Switzerland is in an eternal election campaign So we vote three to four times a year and we also vote uh, Regional for people to get into the National Council. So it's kind of like Switzerland focuses more on policies rather than politicians would you say a little bit of both a little bit of both but it's like you're very involved but in we need case. the policies if we don't like most politicians are crooked random. but in Switzerland it's relatively easy yeah some cantons uh, have different voting systems like uh, voting publicly by raising hand or some weird family sort the head of state of Switzerland actually though is the federal council and one of them is the president but it doesn't really matter because it changes every year and <laughs> it is just one among equals fun fact Switzerland can actually deny citizenship to anybody who wants to apply for it. In fact, in 2010, there was one lady who was denied because her neighbors said she was annoying. There's a lot of those stories, like somebody not knowing where the baker is in the village because she shops in a big store. No passport for you. In regards to religion, <laughs> like most countries in Europe, most of the people will at least culturally identify with Christianity. And in Switzerland, the case is mostly with Catholicism or Protestantism. It used to be very important. My grandma told me uh, her parents would not have accepted her bringing home a Catholic. But nowadays, uh, we don't really care anymore. Now, of course, this is one source that plays a role in many of the regional differences throughout Switzerland and they also kind of have like a healthy level of regional competition and with that let's move on to the sports part with art so sports in Switzerland go hand in hand even on the corporate side in fact because the tax laws many European and international sports federations hold their headquarters in Switzerland domestically though Switzerland has some sports that they actually invented such as Schwangen which is played Schwangen. in sawdust and the contenders wear burlap shorts there's also Hornacy. I don't know that I'm going to wrestle in sawdust you will find sawdust in places you didn't even know you had. Which is played in sawdust, and the contenders wear burlap shorts. There's also Hornison. It's a team sport. It's kind of like a mix between golf and baseball. Yo, that's a hell of a golf in a club. Country with big snowy mountains, you're going to get an emphasis on, this is, I know, a total shocker, on winter sports. Skiing and mountaineering are pretty much taught from adolescence. Switzerland also invented competitive sledding. They invented yeah. the first bobsled and bobsled track in St. Moritz. Switzerland has done pretty well considering their size in both the Summer and Winter Olympics. Alpine skiing being their strongest event with 22 gold medals. The cause when you born with skis on your feet. In Switzerland. They had a huge crash in 1955 that stopped it all. But the government made a little loophole exception for electric racing. And finally we cannot end I don't even know that electric car racing existed. In this segment without mentioning the most popular athlete. I know him. Roger Federer. He's part of the big three. 20 Grand Slam singles title winner. 103 ATP singles titles. Two-time Olympic medalist. He has streets named after him. Coins with his face. He's a model for Rolex and numerous brands. Good There's a God. lot of babies out there named after him for sure. I once got a trophy for potato sack racing and it was a big deal. Like my mom was proud of me and I do not know how to Where did that come from? So, um... <laughs> 
Thank you, Art. Yeah, the Swiss people have shown that even though they're a small country, they still can pack a punch with a competitive side. And we have this thing called Kantonigast, where each canton really has their own rules and does their own thing. To explain a little bit more about the culture and how things kind of go out in that way for Switzerland, here's Random Hannah with culture stuff. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm back! And remember, you can get a random Hannah shirt at GeographyNow.com. The culture of Switzerland cannot be easily summarized as a nation. That's because it breaks down to each canton having its distinct identity. There are lots of stereotypes for them, but here are some that you guys told us. Argau is known for having bad drivers. Valet has the most incomprehensible accent, while Graubünden has the most beautiful one. Glarus doesn't exist, Zurich has a superiority complex, and Geneva is just the French version of Zurich. Appenzell is known for hippies and alternative medicine. This Funny is enough, awesome. Inner Appenzell didn't give women the right to vote until 1991, and the country as a whole till 1971. In fact, Switzerland is known for having many interesting laws. For example, if you live in an apartment, you are not allowed to make distracting noises after 10 p.m. You're not allowed. Um, for example, if you live in an apartment, you are not. After 10 p.m., no toilet flushing, no laundry, no showering. No parties, unless notify the neighbors in advance. Sorry guys, I'm gonna have to flush my toilet if you don't mind. That seems crazy. You're allowed to make distracting noises after 10 p.m. You're not allowed to cut your grass, hang your laundry, or do noisy chores on Sunday. The Swiss really seem to value their silence. The Swiss are known for their many discoveries and inventions as well, such as cellophane and aluminum foil. Yeah. Okay. The vegetable. She says aluminum like an American, doesn't she? Aluminum foil, not that aluminum stuff. Inventions as well, such as cellophane and aluminum foil, Velcro, the vegetable peeler, the discovery of nucleic acid and DNA, and they were co-creators of the World Wide Web. Notable contemporary icons of Swiss culture include figures like Globy, Papa Mole, Shellen Orsley, and the most famous one worldwide, Heidi. We've they definitely heard of Heidi before. Arts in every field. You can find it in everything like Basel, with its 13 century Romanesque architecture That's a beautiful to the early church. 20th century Dada movement. Even Helvetica font and its variants originated in Switzerland. It's one of the preferred fonts that we use on Geography Now. Speaking of the It's arts, one of my one preferred fonts too. I like that font. Film. And if you want to learn more about Switzerland's films, follow my channel, Filmography Now. Hannah has a spin-off. In any case, Hannah has a spin-off channel. has its own festivals and celebrations. You have everything from the Basler Fasnacht, where people in Basel dress up in masks and throw confetti. To Umspunenfest, held every 12 years in the town of Interlaken, where men compete to throw massive boulders. There's too many festivals, we can't go through them all. Partially because we have to move on, which means you know what's coming next. The Florida man himself, Key. We need another hurricane. <laughs> Come on, Keith. What's up, everybody? Keith here. So today I decided to wear my bathrobe because, you know, you got to live life comfortable. By the way, Yolo. guys, you can buy a Keith shirt. Look at that design. Hey, design everybody got their own okay, shirts. Okay, so you guys think you know Swiss music and all that stuff. You probably think of, you know, yodeling, cowbells. That's a good start, but let's go a little further. Many experts will agree that European alpine yodeling had its roots in Switzerland dating back to the early 1500s. The technique was used by herdsmen trying to call their livestock. Or communicating far distances between villages in the mountains. Many will say that the traditional national dance music of Switzerland though is Lander. It uses a 3-4 time signature. Quarter note gets every single beat, whatever. This style was actually adopted by many classical composers like Beethoven, uh, Schubert. Uh, they kind of just, you know, took it and ran with it. Okay, now let's fast forward a couple hundred years. They actually hosted and won the very first Eurovision Song Contest. Fun fact, 30 years later, they would actually win again, but with Celine Dion, even though she's Canadian. And for some reason- How, you know, how the hell did they win with Celine Dion? She's... What? win again but with Celine Dion even though she's Canadian and for some reason Tina Turner is a citizen <laughs> it has nothing to do with banks and money <laughs> <laughs> anyway there are tons of music festivals like street parade festival sure. the Montreux Jazz Festival which has had such artists as Pat Feeney Steve Morse band I hope to go there at some point goal of mine there's even a statue of Freddie Mercury as Queen recorded many of their top hits wow. in the studio over there all right we don't have time to talk about the entire evolution
evolution of the 20th century and the 21st century of Swiss musicians and stuff like that. But however, what I will say is that if you like heavy metal bands, you should check out Celtic Frost, which is a great metal band. I hope you enjoyed. We're gonna have to check out some Celtic Frost. We never heard of them. My segment today. Stay Keith, everybody. Thank you, Keith. So something important about Switzerland is how they interact with the rest of the world. Which brings us to the last segment, the friend zone. Oh, Ooh, we're getting friend zone. Who's the friends? We have managed to actually dodge a bullet and stay neutral throughout the last century, which was a quite difficult thing to achieve. I mean, they're so neutral that even North Korea joined the UN before them. Although you guys did host the European... Yeah, we'll host anything with you diplomacy. But hosted? But we'll also pay for it, but we don't join. Here's how they paid out <laughs> their diplomacy game. In respect to their constitution and overall global reputation, Switzerland's foreign policy is to traditionally avoid alliances and work for humanitarian efforts that strive for world peace and prosperity. And it seems like if the world was more like Switzerland, it would be a better place. This is partially why they host more international organizations than any other country in the world, most heavily concentrated in Geneva. Nonetheless, with their intense history and background, there are some countries that Switzerland has to admit they have quite a closer link to, if at the very least culturally. No one likes to make fun of Germans more than the Swiss. But in reality, these two are so heavily tied in, especially with the Baden-Württemberg state that borders Switzerland. The area around the town of Rottweil was part of the old Swiss Confederacy that was lost during Napoleonic Wars, and today the town has an agreement of friendship with Switzerland. Overall, South Swabian Germans and German-speaking Swiss generally understand and get each other way better than, say, a Berliner German. In that regard, Austria has traditionally been one of their biggest rivals in things like sports and outclassing each other with things like classical music, architecture, and general welfare. They both admire each other's systems of operation, and many Swiss will say that Austrians probably get them way better than the Germans. Otherwise, France pretty much has the oldest diplomatic exchange when they signed the Treaty of Perpetual Peace in 1516, and the first Swiss ambassador abroad was hosted in Paris in 1798. Today, France hosts more Swiss people in diaspora than any other country in the world at nearly a quarter million, and they appreciate each other's, shall we say, bougie standards. On the other hand, Italians, mostly Lombards, have been rapidly moving into Switzerland, mostly in the Ticino canton, and are really taking advantage of that Italian-speaking official status. The Vatican City to this day still hires Swiss guards to stand at the palace, a tradition that has been going on since 1506 one of the oldest military units continue that's something that i damn sure didn't know Stand the at Vatican the palace, a tradition Swiss that guards. has been going on since 1506, one of the oldest military units continuously in operation in the world. They still dress in traditional Renaissance uniforms and are actually trained in combat and small arms. It's not just for show. When it comes to their best friends, though, most Swiss will tell you, oh, we're neutral, we can't say we have a best friend. But after you get them a little tipsy and ask them one more time, they might make a Freudian slip and say, Little Liechtenstein. Switzerland and Little Liechtenstein go hand in hand. They are irrefutably inseparable. Liechtenstein is basically Switzerland's adorable little baby sibling about 200 years younger. They not only share currencies and speak almost the exact same German dialect, they have a wow. customs union, open borders, and the same stance on armed neutrality, but Switzerland also agrees to protect them if anything happens, represent them in any international treaty negotiations or abroad if they are unable to, and even when Switzerland makes mistakes and does things like accidentally firing an artillery shell at a ski resort in 1968, or accidentally invades them because the soldiers couldn't read maps, Liechtenstein is just happy to see them and offers them drinks upon arrival. All right, and in conclusion, Herman, take it away. You're the Swiss guy. I'm out. Switzerland is a beautiful country where it's really nice to live and enjoy a nice and peaceful life or have a nice vacation if you bring the necessary cash. <laughs> Well, thank you guys so much. Thank you, Herman, for being in this video. It was oh, so man. fun filming with you. I can't believe I flew out here to just see you. Stay tuned. Syria is coming up next. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Geography, now Switzerland. We learned a hell of a lot. I hope you were taking notes. There will be a quiz at the end of the Fan Flag Friday tomorrow. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure you smash the like button. Smash the dislike button if you dislike it, but the summer run, which just sounds like a heavenly place to live. Get over it. Show them all the love in the world. Tell the next one I'm highly combustible. You guys be happy, healthy, safe. Love you to the moon and back. Peace.